I bet with Interbet only. They're a fantastic site. I've never had any issues with them. They are very professional. There's never a problem. You deposit money. Two seconds later, it's in your account. You withdraw, which I do very occasionally. And uh, I believe it's also two seconds it's in your account. The fourth race on the card, well, if the betting market's anything to go by, it just confirms how difficult this race really is. 28 to 10 about Hampton Court, and then there's a huge gap in the betting market, 6 to 1 and upwards, the rest of the field. Race 4 is at 25 past 2, a 66 handicap over 1,000 metres where the average merit rating is a 64. I'm not so sure I agree with the betting market, uh, Rahil. Uh, just to also mention to the viewers that number three, Alfonso Spagoni, is an early scratching. Let me make it very clear. I'm not saying that Hampton Court can't win. Of course he can win. He's 28 to 10 favourite. He loves the poly. He's got solid form. He never knows how to run a bad race. Or he doesn't know how to run a bad race. He, he's a four-time winner. But for me, there's a big gap from 28 to 10, right out to 6 and 7 and 8 to 1 in the rest of the field. I just don't know if it's... The, the betting seems to suggest it's a one-horse race, and, and I don't think it's a one-horse race. Maybe I'm wrong. Do you believe it's a one-horse race? No, I feel that Hampton Court is going to have a massive challenge on his hand. He has to carry 61 and a half, so I think that a few others could get the better of him in this race. There's no value at 28 to 10. There's better value elsewhere in this race, and I quite like a bit of the four-horse Leslie's part to fame. Now, I think that the pace is going to be on in this lineup and it's going to suit him perfectly. He's neatly drawn in gate three now with the scratching of Alfonso Spagoni. He'll be able to get into a perfect position. Ashton Aries rides him. And with the pace being on, it's going to suit him and he'll be doing his best work at the business end of things. If we have a look at his penultimate run on the rain affected poly, he was drawn in gate three. He had to carry 61 and a half on his back. And he was running on at the business end of things. He finished fourth, beaten 2.8 lengths by Daidi. His 400 to finish was in a time of 22.7. So that's encouraging. And I think that with the pace being on, it's going to suit him. And at around 12 to 1, he offers some nice value. And I think that he's a horse to keep a close eye on. The 9 horse, Master Kiku, terribly disappointing last time out. He was heavily supported in the market. He went off at 5 to 2 favorite. And he was comfortably beaten by Faustino. He went off to the front but then faded at the business end of things. He returns to the course and distance that he recorded his maiden win over. Yes, Guy Fox, who did win the race, was disqualified and Master Kiku was promoted. Sherman Brown gets a ride and I think that Master Kiku, I'd like to see how they do elected riding from that 8th draw. I'm hoping that he's given a chance and allowed to run on because if the pace is on here, it's going to suit him as it did in his penultimate run when he ran on really nicely to finish behind Canadian ball beaten into fifth position, one and a half length. So Master Kiku will be there. He's a three-year-old son of Master of My Fate. He's open to improvement as well. So he must have a chance at around 8-1, to one, offers some nice value as well. So those would be my two value plays in this race, Warren. I do have respect for the seventh, seventh song, Rachel Venica aboard. Much improved last run. Was the fastest to finish in a time of 22.7 when beaten by Faustino. The two and a half kgs off his back will certainly help his chances. He's a consistent horse on the poly for three seconds, two thirds and two fourths. So I think that seven song must be thrown in. And then this other seven year old in the race, Alpha Mike Foxtrot. Well drawn in gate two. He has a lightweight on his back with only 52 and a half. Rocky Coast has been a subsequent winner from the patronage form line. So I think that Alpha Mike Foxtrot is another horse at around 10 to 1. I think that you can throw into those trifectas and quartets. He does well over the course and distance. Seven tries for two wins. And he's on a mark of 51. So he has dropped in the ratings quite a bit. So I think that he must also go into your bets as well. Warren, do you have a first choice in this race? Or is there a value horse that you quite like? We haven't compared notes by any means, you know, and you like number four, Leslie's path to fame. So do I. You'll see up in the slide a little bit later on that he's a horse that I've picked to keep an eye on. And like you, I think he'll run very well. Really difficult race. You can make a case for a lot of these runners, even like you know, number 11, Pacific Winter over the page, 12, Iron Bark. They've got chances as well, so it's very, very difficult. But at the top of the preview, we said that... Uh, the betting suggests 28 to 10 and then 6 and 7 to 1 bar the rest of them and upwards. 
for me, it's, it's not as easy as that. Maybe we'll be wrong. Maybe Hampton Court will win by six hard held, and that's great because he's got the form to do that. But I, I'm not brave enough to banker this horse in my pick six. I'm loading up. As you've heard from Raheel and I, there's a lot in this race that have got chances. So I suggest you play cautiously and put as many in as your budget will allow you to. It's Donovan Everture from Cape Racing and uh, I'd just like to say it's an absolute pleasure to be involved with uh, Intrabet and Cape Readers in this, uh, in this golf day today here at Pool Valley. Um, it's fantastic for the industry to see all the relevant stakeholders coming down and having a good time and networking and it's exactly what the, the industry needs right now in terms of moving forward and recreating some positivity to take us forward into the next year.